Let's talk about Redux. Redux is a state management JavaScript library which was popularized by the framework React. Now, especially in big React projects where there are a lot of states and it becomes a really difficult job to pass these states values as properties from one component to another, Redux solved this exact problem. Now you might see Redux getting a lot of bad light because of all the boilerplate that's involved with it. But I don't see its pattern as a real problem and at the end of the day, it's really making your lives easier. Now you might notice that there are a lot of new words coming in while I'm explaining Redux, but the concepts behind them are really easy. So stick till the end of the video and I guarantee you that you'll get a good understanding of how Redux works. So let's get straight into it. To start with the Redux project, we'll create a new folder called Redux Starter. And we'll initialize a new npm project here using npm init. This will create a new package.json file for us. And now I'll open our directory in VS Code. Now if you notice npm init has created a package.json file for us. And currently it has no dependencies. So let's go ahead and use the npm install command to install Redux. Now instead of running our npm install command in the terminal that we opened earlier, we will be using the integrated terminal that's present within VS Code, which you can open by dragging the bottom of the screen up like this, or by just using the shortcut Control shift tilde. Now I'll write npm install redux. And if you notice the dependency section now has redux version 4.1 installed. Now before we start writing redux code, Let's see what are the main building blocks for Redux. So the only three things you need to understand to work with Redux are store, reducer, and action. Now we'll start with the main one, which is the store. Now the store is the core of Redux where all your state values are stored. Hence the store is the single common source of truth for all of your state values. So let's go ahead and create our store and we'll see what it looks like. So here on VS Code, I'll create a new file called store.js. Since we'll just be using Redux in the node environment as of now, we'll have to use require statements to import functions from the Redux library. So we'll go ahead and import the create store function from the Redux library. And we'll create a new variable called store, which takes in the object that's returned from the create store function execution. Now, one important thing to notice is that the create store function requires a mandatory function to be passed as a parameter. And in the world of Redux, these functions are called reducers. We'll get into what reducers are in a little while, but for now, I'll just create an empty function and I'll pass this reducer to the create store function. And let's create another file called main.js. Here, we'll import the store that we've created in our store.js file. So to export the store from here, we'll first write module.exports and have a store as the default export. So we'll say const store is equal to require the store file. Now let's quickly console log the store object and we'll see what all's in there. To run main.js, I'll just go to my terminal and say node main.js. And if you notice on the terminal, we have a store object logged out. Now, as I told before, Redux is a very lightweight library and its core store object only provides four functions, which are dispatch, subscribe, get state and replace reducer. Now out of these four functions, get state and dispatch are the most commonly used. As the name says, get state function is just used to get the current state of your store. Now, before we go any further, let's first understand what reducers are. So if you see here, a reducer is just a function which takes in the initial state and the action that is supposed to be performed on that state as parameters and then returns the updated state. So if you carefully notice the function definition here, it's taking in a state parameter, which by default is this initial state object here. For now, this object has just only one key value pair counter, which is initialized with zero and then the second parameter is something called an action. Now an action is just a plain JavaScript object with a mandatory key type. So this object will always have the type key and the value of this type key will be the action that you want to perform on that particular state object. Since in our example, we're using counter as a state value, we have one action increment, which will increment that state value. And hence inside a reducer will be handling that particular action. 
So if you see, we're checking for multiple action types here. For now, there is just one action increment and that is handled inside this if clause. So we're saying if action type is increment, just increment the state dot counter value by one. And then we have an else statement, which is basically just returning the state as it is without any updates. The initial state that we just defined here for this one particular reducer function counts as a single slice inside the store object. So the store is divided into multiple slices and each slice gets its own reducer. Right now, since we're only operating with one reducer, we'll only have one slice. Now, since we've defined all the moving parts in our Redux application, let's see how the flow actually works. So whenever the user wants to update the state, for example, in this case, increment the counter value, he'll dispatch an action object using the dispatch function that was available in our store object, which we just saw here, right? Now this particular function takes one parameter, which is the action object itself. And we just simply call store.dispatch function with the action object as the parameter. Now this function call lets the store know that there is incoming action and to handle that particular action, the store calls the reducer. Now the reducer knows if an action type of increment is coming in, it should be incrementing the counter. So it performs the incrementation and then returns the new state value, which is then in the end updated in our store and our store value will get updated from zero to one. Now don't worry if this flow doesn't make sense yet. These terms, action, store and reducer might feel new to you, but with practice, you'll get used to all of this. So let's go ahead and actually write what we showed here in the diagram. So we'll go back to our store.js where we use create store and pass a reducer to it. Right now the reducer function is not doing anything. So let's give it something to do. We'll define our initial state similarly as we defined here. So we'll say cons init state is just an object with a counter value which is initialized with zero. Here in a reducer we'll define two arguments that it can take in which is state and action. Now the state parameter by default should be taking in the value of your init state. Now within the reducer definition, you can either use switch or if else, both works fine. You'll see a lot of examples where switch is being used. For simplicity, I'll just use if else. So I'll say that if the action that's coming in, if its type is increment, then just increase the state dot counter value by one and then return the updated state. Now at the end of every reducer function, there should be an else case which is returning the state as it is. And this is really important because if there are no incoming actions, the reducer should be returning your current state value. Now we're done defining our reducer. Now let's just go to our main.js. And here, instead of logging the store, we'll log the result of store.getState function here. So we'll say store.getState and then run our main.js to see what the output is. So if you notice, Using get state, you can see the store being logged here. Currently, the store only has one slice and within that slice, there is only one state value, which is the counter and it's initialized with zero. Now let's try to dispatch the action increment to it and we'll again log the store state by using get state to see if the value actually got incremented. So here I'll define an increment action object. Since every action object should have a type property will give the type property and pass the value as increment. As a standard, you'll notice that a lot of places people are using increment the action name in all caps. So I'm just keeping increment all caps for now. And now by using the store.dispatch function that was available to us, we'll dispatch the action object increment. And then again at the end, let's console log the state values so we can see if the value actually got incremented. So we'll save it, run it again. And as you can see, the counter got incremented by one. Let's do this increment once again. We'll copy paste the same dispatch increment action and then console the state again. Let's run our file again. And as you can see, the counter is now increasing till two. Now, instead of writing these console log statements every time, if you remember, there was a function called subscribe available in our store object. So we can just simply say store dot subscribe. And this subscribe function takes in a callback function as a parameter. And here I'll just paste the console log statements. I'll remove these statements from every other place. And now just notice what happens if I run the file again. 
So as you can see, the console log is happening every time an action is being dispatched. Hence using store.subscribe, you can define a behavior that needs to happen every time an action is dispatched. And in this case, I'm just logging the current state every time a dispatch is called. Now let's quickly go ahead and define another action called decrement. People usually store these action objects under a variable name so that they can be reused. This will especially come in handy when we'll be dealing with more complex action objects and we'll see those in a minute. So we've defined a new action called decrement. We'll go to our store. Here we'll define another action handler. We'll add another case and say else if the action type is decrement, then just take the state counter value and decrement it by one. We'll store this, go back to our main script. Here, let's try to dispatch a decrement action too. So here, after incrementing two times, we're also decrementing. So your value should go from zero to one, then one to two, and then from two to one, because we're decrementing. If you run a script again, you'll notice that it went from one to two, then two to again one, because we dispatched a decrement action. Now let's quickly try to add another variable in our state. So we'll say something like name, and then initialize it with some name, let's say John. Now let's go back to our main script where we defined all our action objects. Here we'll define another action object called update name, which will, as the name says, update the name value. The type here, let's call it update name. And since we also need to provide a value which the name should be updated to, we'll add something else called payload. Now you can call this object anything. As a standard, people call it payload and any additional information that your action object requires is passed here. So in this payload object, I'll just send the updated name. Let's call it Jane. Save this. So we've defined a new action object with the type update name and a payload object, which is having the new name value. Now let's go back to our reducer and handle this particular action. So we'll add another else if case here. Tell the reducer if the incoming action type is update name. And in that case, update the state dot name to action dot payload dot name. Since our new name is present within the action object under an object called payload and under the key name and then return the updated state. Let's save this, go back to a main file. Here we'll also dispatch a new action and we'll pass update name to it. Let's run a script again and see what the output is. So as you can see in the output right after the second increment, your name is getting updated from John to Jane. So just to reiterate over the three main parts that are present in Redux, the first one is the action object. The action object is just a plain JavaScript object, which has one mandatory key type and then an optional payload. Now moving to a reducer, a reducer is just a function which takes an initial state and action as parameters and then returns the updated state. And then coming to our main store, a Redux store can be created using the create store function and you need to pass a minimum of one reducer into it. You can also have multiple reducers and then combine them using the function combine reducers and then pass it to create store. We'll see an example for that in our next video. So in this video, we just saw what all Redux has to offer and how to work with it. We saw a very basic example where we just had one reducer managing a single slice in a store. But in our next video, we'll be creating multiple slices and we'll also be seeing how to work with middlewares in Redux. And right after that, we'll integrate it with React. So I'll see you in the next video.